Welcome to OAA Now, your home for Oakland Activities Association news and information. Here's your host, Sammy Taramina. Welcome to the special OAA Now football preview show. This is the gold edition. I am Sammy Taramina, blogger around the OAA, the host of Last Week Brain Cells, and the host of Between Terminus on Orient Neighborhood Television. You can catch us on YouTube and also on Orient Neighborhood Television as well. So we're going to talk about all four divisions, starting with the gold this week, followed by the blue next week, then the white in two weeks, and the red in three weeks. So let's start off with the gold division. We'll start off with the Yellow Jackets of Auburn Hills. Avondale this is a team that made the playoffs last year, won a playoff game, changed offenses, um, changed coaches under Coach Bob Meyer. But when you look at Avondale, the expectation for them is to reach higher. So here's Avondale coach Bob Meyer at the podium talking about the Yellow Jackets. Hello, I'm Bob Meyer. I'm the head football coach at Auburn Hills Avondale High School. Uh, the 2023 season was wonderful. Avondale won the gold division. We hosted a playoff football game. We won a playoff game. We finished 9-2. and two. The first thing we need to do in 2024 is forget about 2023. It's over. Don't care. The 2024 team will establish its own identity. We're going to forge our own toughness. We're going to embrace the standards that will become Avondale football. With me today are our three captains, three-year varsity starter and returning captain Justin Sykes, starting linebacker Bryce Thomas and Earl Arrington. A definite benefit in playing 11 games last season is the amount of invaluable experience that we gained for our younger players. Even though we returned six starters on each side of the ball from last year, we returned 25 players who played in multiple playoff games in some capacity. The juniors last year played enough varsity games where they were playing like seniors last year, which is a point of excitement for this upcoming season. We return our starting linebacking core, led by our captains Bryce and Earl, as well as Jacob Manley and Brandon McCauley. This group is fast, physical, athletic, and experienced. Our secondary also returns three of the four starters, led by three-year varsity starter Justin Sykes and uh, Cooper Vaufre, who is a Division II commit. Our offense will build on the 2,000 yards rushing led, that we had last season, led by Justin Cooper and Elijah Grigsby. Our offensive line returns three starters in Cam Washington, Noah Smith, and junior Caleb Johnson, but will also be more athletic as our players have embraced the concept of whatever it takes to win mentality. As always, we will place a lot of emphasis on all three phases of football, led by our kicker, the machine, Timmy Paul, this season we're going to strive to win the gold, home, host a home playoff game, create as much damage as possible in the playoffs. We will be rooting for all of the OAA teams this season. We wish everyone to stay healthy and good luck. Thank you very much. When looking at Avondale, the expectations are high. They have questions at quarterback with something that's going to be a concern. So I did catch up with Coach Bob Meyer in an interview with him um, before he left for the day. I got the coach of the Yellow Jackets, Coach um, Bob Meyer here. Coach, um, obviously your defense coming back, loaded on defense. So talk about, you know, the offense, obviously the quarterback situation, big time concern for, for you heading in the year. Yeah, you know, the, the biggest thing that, that Tyler brought to us last year was not the 20 plus touchdowns that he threw, it was the zero interceptions, zero turnovers that we got from that position. So this year we're not asking our quarterbacks, and we've got three of them competing. And Max Checkley is going to be a senior, is doing a great job. All we're asking them is to do your job, control the situation, and we're going to run the football to set up the pass, which is more of my background than having you know that, that thrower like Tyler last year. Talk about your schedule. It is brutal. You open up with Cedar Springs, obviously, um, Macomb Lutheran North. How's that schedule looking? Well, by design, it's looking tough. You know, we, we wanted to prepare for the playoffs, and we sought out playoff football teams. And Carleton Airport and Cedar Springs are two of those teams, along with, you know, the two from the OAA that we've picked up who are bigger than us by a 1,000 kids. So, But if you want to be the best, you got to beat the best. And it's going to be assignment football. The kids are going to have to come in and do their job right out of the chute. What are the expectations here, Coach? Expectations are win our division make the playoffs, one home playoff game, if not more, and, and do what we can do. Thank you really much, Coach. Thank you, appreciate you. Yep. I do also have a blog on Avondale for their po on the podcast, so I did have them also on there as well. So 
so you can catch, take a look at that. I will post it on the links on the, um, it's on the um, blog at Saginaw Bay 4650 at blogspot.com if you want the podcast version of, of the Avondale Yellow Jackets. So let's look at the schedule for the Yellow Jackets. Obviously talking to Coach Meyer, open up the year at home against Cedar Springs. It is a very interesting matchup. Cedar Springs is a four and five team last year. Um, it's the first meeting between the two schools. Um, Cedar Springs brings their quarterback back. They got three proven running backs. So it's going to be a really interesting matchup of two different styles between the um, between Avondale and Cedar Springs. It's going to be a really interesting matchup. So I did watch the um, Cedar Springs football preview on the Casey Campbell podcast um, to watch that one. So that'll be really interesting between Avondale and Cedar Springs week one over at uh, in Auburn Hills. Week two, it's Seaholm. Um, when you look at this matchup, it's a clash of different styles, the Veer versus the Wing T be a lot of running in that game so I'm very curious to see how Seaholm is especially when they lost a lot of talent from a year ago um, it's a and these two teams know each other quite well of course some Seaholm did knock off Avondale um, last season so it'll be a really interesting matchup between the Yellow Jackets and the Maples there week three Macomb Lutheran North and Auburn Hills I mean this is gonna be a really interesting matchup um, coach Bob Meyer was at Livonia Clarenceville before taking the Avondale job. So he also he knows that coaching staff at Macomb Lulu and North very well. It's a really interesting matchup between the um between the with the Yellow Jackets going up against Macomb Luther and North. Week four, taking on Pontiac. It's a rivalry game. Um, Avondale's had Pontiac's number um, in the past. It's at Pontiac this year. So it should be a really interesting matchup between the Yellow Jackets and the um and the Phoenix. And then week five, it's Ferndale. Um, this is going to be a fun one. I mean, like when you really look at the matchup between um, with these two teams, these two teams are no stranger to one another. It should be a really interesting matchup this year. Um, I think that one is at, um, so it'll be really interesting to see how that one goes. Um, week number six is Royal Oak. Um, of course, the Avenue Royal Oak, no strangers to one another. Um, it should be a really interesting matchup there. Week seven, taking on Berkeley. Um, Another interesting match, of course, Avondale had no issue last year with Berkeley over at Hurley. I think this year's match is in Auburn Hills, so that should be another interesting match. And then the two matchups, week eight against Stony Creek, um, at Stony Creek. This is a big game for Coach Bob Meyer. He mentioned on the podcast, um, Stony Creek, a D1 school. Um, they, are, they have a ton of experience. Um, so it should be a really interesting matchup. I'm curious to see the, the, def the defensive matchup between them. Um, Coach Rick Powell, who's a defensive coordinator, I mean, former defensive coordinator at Lake Orion. Um, Bob Myers' defense is loaded this year. And then they close out the year, week nine, at home against Carlton Airport. Um, Airport, very young team this year, lost a lot of talent last year from a team that lost in the region final at Harper Woods. So Carlton Airport and Avondale, that should be a really interesting matchup between two teams that are gonna run different styles this year. So when you look at the Yellow Jackets this year, Avondale is going to be a team that I think can really do some damage again this year. The defense looks good. They got everything but the quarterback. If they can figure out that quarterback issue, watch out for Avondale. I think Avondale is a team that can be really, really scary to watch this upcoming season. So let's go from Avondale now to Berkeley. Of course, Berkeley last year had the worst offense in the OAA, 5.1 points a game. Um, scored 42.1 points a game allowed last year. That was why they were 0-9 last year. So Berkeley made a lot of changeover. I mean, there's a new athletic director over there. There's also a new head coach over there at Berkeley. So here's Berkeley coach um, Casey Humes at the podium. Hello, my name is Casey Humes. I'm new head coach at Berkeley High School. Um, I was the JV head coach last year. Um, took over this, uh, this winter. Um, a team that went 0-9. So I would say this year we uh, have a lot of work to do to rebuild the uh, foundation of uh, this program, um, try to get back to uh, some of the winning ways in uh, early 2010s, 2015 years. Um, I brought with me today three seniors and one junior, all returning varsity players from last year. Um, I think the strengths of this team this year will be how many guys we have returning from the junior and senior class. Um, they played a, a lot of minutes last year. They'll be able to uh, carry us and kind of lead. Um, the younger kids that we also have coming, sophomores, will have playing up on varsity as well. Um, 
a weakness or an area to work on, we have to uh, grow our team. The last two years, we've only uh, won two games, so a lot of uh, the faith um, in our school has kind of dwindled away. So to kind of build the excitement back about football, to get more guys to come out and play for us is something that we'll be working on and kind of building on the little things. Um, I think a lot of went, things went wrong last year, so it's kind of working on the things that we can improve on and off the field to get these guys ready to compete and uh, win some games this year. Um, Parker Hadfield is a senior. Caleb is going to be a senior this year. Tony is a senior running back, and Eli is our junior. Um, Eli was a captain last year. Um, Parker was also um, one of our leaders. Um, we look to Caleb and Tony to also kind of carry that load this year um, to help kind of lead the guys who will be playing for their first years um, on varsity. Um, we got a new athletic director, Matt Rollick, as well. So there's kind of a lot of turnover going on at Berkeley. Um, I'm just looking to kind of get out in front, kind of get this team back to where uh, we should be. Thank you. As I mentioned earlier, of course, Matt Rollick, of course, the um, baseball coach at Berkeley. He is the new athletic director over there at Berkeley. So a lot of changeover. They're getting a new field, new stadium. So I didn't get an interview with them, Coach Humes, but I did get a podcast with him. So I did speak with him in the um, in, I did speak with him on the podcast. Before I let you go, um, Coach, um, what is your expectations this year for Berkeley football coming forward? Um, I think the expectation for Berkeley football is, you know, the similar expectations of, of all teams. Um, you know, we want to set the right tone. Um, you know, we're trying to build trust with our players and, and, and uh, a family atmosphere with our players. And I, I think that that takes time. We're going to be competitive every Friday night. You know, I'm, uh, I, in my mind, when we put it together all on the field, the wins and the losses will take care of itself. Um, we need to be competitive in, in every game on Friday nights and on Saturdays. I hope um, with the work that we're doing in the off season and in the season that that translates into more wins. Like I said, I want to surprise, um, I want to be surprised at the end of the year about what, what it is that we do. I don't think I want to set a limit or an expectation for the growth that these guys can see. Um, I think that if we come out and we compete and we're ready to play on Friday nights, we're gonna surprise some people. We're gonna surprise ourselves, And I think we'll be placed in a better situation than we were last year and even the year before. Okay, now we look at the um, schedule for the Berkeley Bears. Of course, we look at that schedule and it's very interesting. They open up the year at Wald Lake Central um, that was a game last year that was a, that created shockwaves that um, Berkeley ended up losing that one. It was not close at all. I mean, so when I look at the Bears, I mean, like, I know they talk revenge tour. And it looks like that, you know what I mean? Like, and I looked it on, on the Twitter feed on, um, on, a, on X, you know what I mean? Like, they look at this season as the revenge tour, and it starts off at Walt Lake Central against the Vikings team that, you know, they, I mean, this is a, that's a must-win game for Berkeley if they want to have the season that they want to have this year. Week two, they take on Troy Athens, and that's an interesting matchup. Of course, Troy Athens is a team that runs the wing T. Um, Berkeley, of course, we know they got some issues up front. Um, so that should be an interesting matchup between the Red Hawks and the Bears. I mean, like, that should be a fun matchup to keep an eye on there. Week three, it's Pontiac at Hurley. I mean, last year, Berkeley lost to Pontiac a year ago. I mean, this was not a, um, it was a head scratch for me. It was a shocker that this team lost to um, Pontiac, um, considering what they've been through, the struggles they've been through. But it was a big win for Coach Wendell Jefferson at the time. So when I look at, Pon when I look at that matchup here, um, week three, that should be a really, really interesting matchup there. Week four. They take on Ferndale. It's one of the rivalry games. Um, you know, obviously Ferndale had no issue with Berkeley at Hurley last year. Um, now they got to go return the favor, go to Ferndale this year, and that should be a really interesting matchup there um, between two rivals. And then the rivalry game, um, September 27th, um, homecoming night. 
Royal Oak comes in. It's a big one for Berkeley. They lost 37 nothing last year at Royal Oak. Lost the street sign, the Battle, the Battle of Woodward Trophy. It's right now at Lexington. Berkeley fans hoping want to take that. Flip it up to Catalpa, and I think that should be a really, really interesting matchup between the Bears and the Ravens. It's always a fun matchup because I wrote a column on it a couple years ago. It's one of the best rivalries in town, I think, Ber in the OA, Berkeley and Royal Oak. And then October 4th, they take on Jackson Northwest and Mounties um, on a Saturday game. I mean, this should be a really interesting matchup. I mean, Jackson Northwest, the team has been up and coming. And I think when you look at the Mounties, this is, they're not a bad team. And, you know, it'll be a really interesting challenge for the Bears taking on a team, you know, from Jackson um, in Jackson Northwest. Um, it should be a fun match. The first time these two teams are meeting ever between these two teams. And on October 11th, they take on the Yellow Jackets of Auburn Hills Avondale. A very tough match up here for um, Berkeley taking on a Yellow Jackets team that is probably will most likely be battle tested by this point. And then week eight, they take on Rochester at Hurley. I know it's a pink game for Berkeley. I know they're going to be wearing pink in that one. Um, so that should be a very interesting matchup between um, Rochester and Berkeley. I mean, like, these two teams know each other quite well, and that should be a fun one for sure. And then week number nine, they take on Madison Heights Lampier. Of course, Roy Ozerowski there at Madison Heights Lampier. Uh, I think a former assistant under coach um, Chris Sequoia. Um, but when you look at this matchup here, Berkeley and Lampier, they know each other back when the um, OA was founded early in the year. Then Lampier left to go to the Macomb Area Conference. So when I look at Berkeley this season, um, the Word Revenge Tour is what they're using this year. And I think that's the great motivator, you know, for them. And I think Berkeley, if they, if they can get out to a good start, figure, their, I mean, figure out some things, especially with their depth, putting everything together, building program strength, I mean, this team can really, really surprise some people this year. So the Berkeley Bears, I think, you know, had an 0-9 year last year. Um, they are looking to have a strong bounce back year um, this upcoming season. So Berkeley's a team to really, really watch for heading into the year. Now let's go from the Bears, let's go to the Eagles of Ferndale. When you look at Ferndale, um, last season was a very disappointing year for Coach Eric Royal. I mean, like, Winning, I mean, not making the playoffs last year, just had some really tough luck. Um, but when you look at this team, they got a lot of experience coming back. So here is Ferndale coach Eric Royal at the podium. Uh, I want to say uh, hello to everybody, all the coaches and players. I want to uh, thank Coach Vernon for uh, uh, putting on the event again every year. Um, sorry we went all up outside the guidelines this year. We got a very huge senior class, about 23 seniors returning this year. Um, and the seven that I brought with my one junior have really displayed the type of leadership that's required to win at a high level this summer. So I uh, felt that they all earned the right to represent their team this year at the press conference. Um, so I'm going to let them introduce ourselves themselves and then I'll talk about our season. Cars, cars, running back receiver, senior. Jeremiah Jones, offensive line, junior. Colin Hawk, I play quarterback, class 2025. Gary Maxwell, running back, DB, senior. Jada Mills, uh, receiver, DB, plus top senior. Tyler Boyd, O-line, D-line, senior. Bryce Ferguson, linebacker, running back, plus top line. Gary Lothar, senior, offensive line. Um, over at Ferndale, uh, we're not we're not running from last year. We uh, we're accepting and we're we're embracing that we feel like we underachieved, um, and we took that approach right from January. Uh, we've been going to work really hard with this senior class, um, hoping to redeem ourselves and and uh, really send this class out at a high note. I have a kind of special place in my heart for this class. These are a majority of my COVID babies um, who were forced to play varsity their freshman and sophomore year due to our low numbers. So a lot of these young men have a tremendous amount of varsity experience. Um, leading the way is uh, Gary and Bryce, who will both have 25 starts combined. I'm sorry, uh, uh, individually to get so 50 starts combined, which that means they started every single game of their high school career so far. Um, so we're really leaning on them to be uh, huge playmakers for us this year with their experience. 
um, and all the rest of them. I think everybody's here on, in front of us at least started three games last year at some point in the season. My, more, majority of them started all, all nine. Um, so we're really, really confident um, about our experience. We just have to bring everything together in our culture and make sure that our leadership stays strong. Um, and we're doing the things that are necessary to win at a high level, which I think these boys are committed to doing. So we're excited about our outlook this season and where our program is going. Um, good luck to everybody and thank you. When you look at the Eagles, as mentioned, they got a lot of experience led by, led by quarterback Cullen Huck. Um, they got a lot of proven talent as well. So I caught up with the um, Eagles coach, um, Eric Royal, to talk about the Eagles. At the coach of the Eagles, Coach Eric Royal here. Coach, you got a lot of experience coming back with this team. Oh, yeah. I mean, like, talk about the experience, how this offseason's been for you. Oh, it's been really good. Like I said, like I mentioned when I got on the podium, um, a lot of these guys were in my freshman class that COVID year, so they were forced to play varsity. We have a lot of experience, a lot of games played from this group, 23 seniors in total, um, and we have about 11 of them on both sides, or nine on both sides of the ball coming back. So. Um, we only graduated four seniors last year, so we're very, very optimistic about this class and the potential they have to do this year. Talk about the coordinators, obviously, and some changes this year. You look at it here, um, offensive coordinator now at Bay City, John Glenn. Yeah. So talk about the changeover and how the, how the changes of the coordinators are. Oh, yeah. I mean, obviously, when you have new coaching changes, you have to do some adjustments in the offseason and things like that. Unfortunately, um, I'm going to be taking over again, uh, doing the play calling on offense. Um, I just, last year was my only year that I didn't do it. Um, but I did pick up some concepts from uh, LeGro last year that we're going to merge from some of the stuff that we did in the previous years when we had some success. So um, the transition has been somewhat seamless, in my opinion. Um, and the boys, uh, we're not changing any of the vocab or anything like that. So we don't have to learn anything new. We just got to get better at what we've been doing. What are your expectations this year, Coach? Uh, I want to win the gold. I want to win the gold and get a home, go home playoff game. Absolutely. Yeah. Thank you really much, Coach. Appreciate it. Thank you. Uh, when you look at the Eagles this year, when you look at the schedule that Ferndale has this year, it is pretty daunting when you look at that schedule. Of course, um, Ferndale opens up the year with Madison Heights Lampier on August 30th. That should be a really interesting matchup um, of experience versus experience. That should be a fun one to keep an eye on there in that one. Week 2, September 6th, they take on North Farmington. Um, a coaching matchup interesting between um, Coach Eric Royal and Coach John Herstein. That should be a fun matchup to keep an eye on there. Um, and, and when you look at it here, they, these two teams are loaded with experience, and I think this should be a, that should be a really fun matchup there. Week three, they take on Royal Oak. And last year, Ferndale um, knocked off Royal Oak. Um, and when you look at that matchup, I think it's going to be interesting to see how um, Ferndale does in that matchup, especially having to travel to Royal Oak. So. That should be a really, really interesting matchup there. Week four, they take on Berkeley at home. I mean, let's, I think that might be their homecoming. I'm not sure. Um, but it should be a really, really interesting matchup there between two rivals who know each other. Actually, Ferndale and Royal Oak as well. That's a rivalry game as well. Both teams really close to one another. Um, so that's another rivalry game as well. So, you know, two rivalry games in weeks three and four. That should be really interesting. Week five, this might be the um, this might be the gold title game. I mean, <coughs> especially excuse me, especially with um, Avondale, that should be a really really interesting game. Um, that matchup, you know, that could go either way. I mean, Avondale we know is a team that runs the wing T. Ferndale wants to spread you out. I mean, this should be a really really interesting game of two different styles. Week six, they take on Pontiac. Um, Again, it's a tough matchup. It should be really interesting to see how this one goes. Um, Ferndale had no issue with Pontiac a year ago. So we'll see how that one goes. Um, and that one there it goes. Um, October 11th, they take on Pontiac Notre Dame Preparatory. At, uh, I think that one's at Pontiac. And that should be a really, really interesting matchup. Of course, the Fighting Irish loaded with experience. I mean, they've been a very good proven powerhouse over there. Um, so that'll be a really, really tough game for Ferndale, traveling to um, traveling to Giddings Road and um, Pontiac and Pontiac Notre Dame Prep. Um, week eight, they take on Southfield a and I mean, when you look at this matchup here, a and we don't know what they got. I mean, like, Ferndale's loaded with experience, so this should, that should be a really fun matchup over there um, between the Warriors and the Eagles in that one. And then week nine, to close out the year, they host Utica Ford. Two. I think that should be a fun matchup there. 
So when you look at Ferndale, it's the first meeting between the two teams in that one. So when you look at Ferndale this year, I think the Eagles have a lot of experience coming back. This is a team that looks to get back into the Division II playoffs. Obviously, as I mentioned, with them being in Division II because Ferndale co ops with Ferndale University and they become Ferndale High. So they are in Division II for the playoffs. So if they do get to the postseason, that is where the division they're going to be at this year. So a lot of, a lot of excitement for Ferndale and Coach Eric Royal with this senior heavy team coming back. This is a team that's loaded with a ton of proven seniors on this team. So Ferndale, you know, they can make some noise this year. You know, so this should be a fun year, I think, for them, you know, to have that bounce back year. I mean, taking on a, taking on a schedule, going to combine 55 and 40, um, this should be a really interesting matchup. Um, interesting year for Ferndale. So let's go now from Ferndale. Let's go to Pontiac. I mean, obviously, when you look at the Phoenix, last year they snapped the, the longest losing streak in the state of Michigan. Um, by knocking off uh, Madison Knights Bishop Foley and Coach Brian Barnes, who's now the new head coach at Water for Kettering. Um, and then they picked up two other good wins to close out the year. They knocked off um, Berkeley, and then um, they got another one as well last season. So here is Pontiac coach Wendell Jefferson talking about the state of the Phoenix. Good afternoon, everyone. It's Coach Jefferson. It's my second year at uh, Pontiac High School. Um, we accomplished a few things that we set out to accomplish last year. Um, however, we want to accomplish more, so we're continuing to work. Um, I have Bryce Brown, linebacker, uh, Famarze Jeffrey, wide receiver DB, and Kanye Donaldson, uh, quarterback. Uh, we've been working extremely hard uh, to, to improve, and, and that's just what we do. We just work to be better than we were the day before. Uh, thank you for having us here, and uh, we look forward to, to this season. Everyone stay healthy. I sadly did not get an interview with Coach Jefferson, but I do have the podcast edition with um, Coach Jefferson. So here is the podcast with me and um, Pontiac Coach Wendell Jefferson. Um, um, what is your expectations this year? Um, I did ask Coach Odin um, his thought process on the um, Detroit mm -hmm. Lions last year. I wanted to know what was your thought process <laughs> with the Lions, um, you know, winning the North for the first time, getting to the playoffs. What was your thought process? Well, I mean, it, it was it's something that you would love to emulate. Mm -hmm. uh, they they they're a team. They have an identity. They stick to their identity, uh, and they work together very very well. You can tell that everyone in that program is on one accord. Mm -hmm. And being a coach, that's all I want. You know, that's all you dream of is being on one accord like that, from the foundation all the way, you know, to the top. They're all in one accord. So I, uh, you know, I'm, I'm happy to, to be able to see an organization like that, you know, during my lifetime. And it gives me something to shoot for with, with our guys. And when you look at, and when you look at that ammunition success, I mean, especially because it was a couple of years ago that the Lions, um, it was before you took over, um, donated some helmets to the Pontiac Phoenix. And, um, Yes. You know, mm -hmm. and obviously, you know, you look at the success they've had and now, you know, it's really impacted, you know what I mean, the entire state and the entire community with the success of the Lions. Right. Um, you know, and I and I see that and I see that with you guys. You know what I mean? Like the um you know, you guys are, are an up and coming team, getting better each day, taking it one day at a time. Um, so my final question to you is what is your expectations heading into the season for you guys? Well, I, 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 as I say all the time, I expect us to compete. I expect us to give our best. I expect us to make the city of Pontiac proud with how we go about our day-to-day -day activities, how we work uh, on the field, how we work off the field, from our grades uh, to our success or our performance on the field. All those things are something that, that we want to be successful at and um, just make our school, our city, uh, our family's proud of the work that we're putting in. I'll let the results, you know, be what they will be. But I know that the winning formula is if you take care of all that stuff, then the results will be there. Mm -hmm. um, it one, goes without fail. One more question. Um, do you have, like, a theme sure. or a model this year for you guys? You know what I mean? Like, a theme this year for you guys? 
No, not yet. Not yet. I, I am working on that. I've, I've had a few go through my head, um, but we don't have our theme uh, narrowed down just yet. Good, um, but when we do, I'll let you know. Ooh, okay. Um, thank you really much for <laughs> thank you really much for joining me this week here. Pontiac Coach Wendell Jefferson here joining us on the podcast this week. Um, thank you for joining us this week. Thank you, Sammy. It was a pleasure. And I will see you. Uh, okay, now when we um. We're going to look at the schedule for the Pontiac Phoenix, obviously. You look at that schedule, it looks really manageable. I mean, they open up the year with Detroit Frederick Douglas. Um, that's, these two teams have not seen each other before. That should be a really interesting match. Detroit Frederick Douglas has really struggled um, as of late, and I think this is a team that really um, – they, they haven't been very good. And I think that should be a really interesting matchup of two teams that, you know, looking to get off to really good starts heading into the year. Week two, they take on Troy. I mean, Pontiac, you know, when you look at this one here, this looks like a mismatch on paper, but it might not be as you think it might be. I mean, like, you know, Pontiac, you know that they're going to battle. They're going to compete. You know, it's a tough match for them going to Troy. I mean, like, it's going to be really interesting to see how that one goes over there. Um, week three, they take on Berkeley. Um, of course, last season, Pontiac knocked off Berkeley. Now the return match is at Hurley. Um... And I think that's where, I mean, like, and Berkeley's got a new field there, so that should be a really, really interesting matchup there. Um, week four is a city rivalry with Avondale. That should be a really fun matchup there. It's a rivalry game. Um, we'll see how that one goes. Week five, they take on Bluebeer Hills. And I think this matchup here, when I look at this one, this looks very winnable for me. And I think, you know, when I look at Bluebeer Hills, I, I just... I'm not sold on that team. I'm really not. I think this is this is a winnable game for Pontiac. I think they can make some noise here. Um, they can win that game. They can send a statement, and I think they could have a great chance to do that. Um, week six, they take on um, Ferndale. Um, another rivalry game. It's a tough matchup for Pontiac, taking on an experienced Eagles team. Week seven, they take on Royal Oak. Um, like I said, this is another winnable game for them. I think Pontiac's had a good chance here to win that game. Um, Royal Oaks at home, and I think this is going to be a really interesting match for them. Week 8, I don't know what to say about this one. I mean, like, I I'm sorry. I mean, like, how do I describe this? It's just, this is going to be a brutal matchup for Pontiac. I mean, taking on Harper Woods. Harper Woods is loaded with proven talent, a lot of experience. I mean, it's going to be really, really a rough go for Pontiac when they take on Harper Woods. And then week nine, Pontiac closes out the year with Detroit Lincoln King Academy. Um, Lincoln King Academy, I'll tell you, they went overtime last year. It was 44-42 with a crazy affair over there at Pontiac. I mean, I'll tell you, Lincoln King's a very dangerous team. And I think, you know, that should be a heck of a game between those two teams, between the Phoenix and the Panthers. I think it's going to be a fun, fun game there in week nine between those two. I mean, like Pontiac, no stranger to tight games. I think Pontiac, you know, this should that should be a really, really fun game down there at Detroit Lincoln King Academy. Um, so when I look at Pontiac this year, got the quarterback, got proven receivers, it's just, it's just proving the program, improving the program, it's just making the program, you know what I mean, like, you know, obviously keep getting better. And I think Coach Jefferson's really, really done that with this team. And I think Pontiac's a team that could really do some damage this year. And I think Pontiac is a they're a scary group. And I think, you know, they can they can make some noise. They can make they can make headways in this division. So I think Pontiac's a team that can really, really do some damage this year. So really excited to see what Coach Jefferson does in year two, building that program over at Pontiac. If he keeps building that program strength, I think Pontiac will be very good for years to come. So that's my take on Pontiac. So let's now go from Pontiac to our last team in the, in the division, which is the Royal Oak Ravens. Um, Royal Oak, you know, last season under Coach Colin Campbell, um, started, to, started to get some momentum. I mean, they got some good wins. I mean, they knocked off Berkeley last year for the battle, for the street sign, battle, I mean, for the battle of Woodward, the street sign. So when you look at Royal Oak, they lost some talent last year, but here's Coach Colin Campbell talking about the state of the Ravens. I just want to start on Colin Campbell, uh, Royal Oak High School. I want to start by thanking Rochester, Coach Vernon, for having us out. We really appreciate it. Uh, thanks to the media as well for coming out. So to start here, we have Julian Burns, uh, wide receiver and defensive back uh, that's coming back for us. We have Blaze Jeffries. He's a uh, slot receiver and another defensive back. And then Peyton Morrison, quarterback and linebacker for us. 
Um, we're excited about the opportunity to compete this year. Last year was learning how to fight, learning how to compete. We're excited about year two. We're excited about the opportunity in front of us. We hope everybody stays healthy and good luck to everybody. Roy Oak's got a lot of questions this year. I mean, one player I noticed I'm excited to see about is Julian Burns. I mean, he has played some quarterback in the past. He's played wide receiver, um, obviously, but there's some concerns. There's a lot of questions I have with Royal Oak. So I caught up with Coach Campbell in an interview talking about the Ravens. I got the coach of the Ravens here, Coach Colin Campbell here. Coach, um, last season you guys have really started showing some signs of improvement. How's everything been for you this season? Uh, it's been a really good off season. Uh, we're excited about what we're building. Um, we got guys that are buying into our process. They're willing to work hard. Um, we got guys like you know Blaze Jeffries, Peyton Morrison, um, Julian Burns. They're guys that have really trusted and believed in. They've been through a lot. Um, and they've just continued to put in that work. And so that's the big thing is just last year we wanted to see is our process going in the right direction. And, and we think a lot of those weeks it was. Talk about your schedule. It's very interesting this year. Some really interesting teams. I mean, like, how's that schedule looking? Uh, schedule, I mean, the big thing is, you, you know, we're, we're always going to be uh, <laughs> in a fight every week. I mean, it's going to be good teams, quality teams. Uh, and we wouldn't want it any other way. So we're just really excited about being able to compete. What are the expectations this year, Coach? Uh, expectations compete go out compete uh, go out and you know fight for for being in the gold like that that's the goal we want to go out and compete we want to go prove that this is different so when I look at Royal Oak this year and I think there's some question marks with them I look at that schedule and I'm going like oh boy so when you look at that schedule open up the air week one against Detroit Lincoln King Academy as I said in the podcast with them um, with both Tyler Kipp along with Coach Doug Corliss and Scott Bernstein in my two podcasts. Um, I said this is an upset trap waiting to happen. I mean, Royal Oak, they're, they're, they're like, you know, Lincoln King Academy, you know, they're, they're one of the, um, you know, it's, it's a tough matchup for Royal Oak because, you know, when you look at school size, you look at, um, you know, you look at obviously Lincoln King Academy is in a lower division. Royal Oak is in D2 for football. Um, it's a difficult matchup for Royal Oak taking on um, Detroit Lincoln King Academy. It's a, it's a difficult matchup, to say the least. And I think that could be a, it's a dangerous, dangerous matchup for Royal Oak in that one. Um, even though it's at home, but Lincoln King has proven they can go on the road. I mean, considering the last two times that Lincoln King has played against um, Hamtramck and Memphis, they've been blowout wins for them. So it'll be a tall order for Royal Oak in that one, taking on a the, taking on a Panthers team that's well coached. I mean, it's going to be a really, really tough match for Royal Oak in that one. And week two, it doesn't get any easier for them to take on Oak Park. Um, Oak Park, you know, is low. You know, they got some experience. They got some talent back. Um, quarterback's a question mark along the line play with them, but it's a tough match for Royal Oak. I mean, obviously, taking on a Knights team that's looking for a bounce back year. And... You know, and it's an interesting matchup, especially seeing Coach Greg Carter on the sidelines if you're Coach Colin Campbell. So that'll be really interesting there. Week three, they take on Ferndale. It's a difficult matchup for this team. Ferndale's got athletes, proven athletes. Royal Oak, big time questions, especially on defense. Um, so when I look at Ferndale and Royal Oak, that's going to be a really interesting matchup. It's a rivalry game, obviously. So we'll see how that one goes for sure. Um, week five, Actually, week four, they take on Livonia Clarenceville in Livonia. Obviously, you know, Coach Bob Meyer's not there anymore. Livonia Clarenceville, they still run the, um, the same offense that he does, that he did when he was at Avondale. So it'll be really interesting to see that matchup between Livonia Clarenceville and um, Royal Oak. I mean, but it's a very difficult matchup to the least there in that one. Week number five, the rivalry game. You really don't say much about it. You know what I mean? You're going to Hurley. On homecoming, on Berkeley's homecoming, it's a difficult matchup, and you know Berkeley's motivated. I mean, Royal Oak right now has the street sign. They won 37 nothing last year. So if you're Royal Oak, you want to keep that momentum, you know, especially heading into that rivalry game. You know, so that should be a fun one September 27th between the um, Bears and the Ravens in that one there. Um, week number, I mean, week number six, Actually, week five, yeah, week six, I mean, like, um, they take on Avondale. And I think this is a matchup where, 
you know, it's a matchup of two different styles. Royal Oak's a team that likes to run a lot. Avondale's a wing T team. I mean, it's going to be really interesting how that one goes in that one there. Um, week seven, it's Pontiac. Um, th this might be another trap game for Royal Oak. I mean, they got to go to Pontiac. That's not an easy trip. Um, you know, Pontiac, obviously, you got Kanye Donaldson there. Um, difficult matchup for Royal Oak in their defense. So that should be really interesting there. And then the final two weeks of the season, it is brutal. You got Groves week eight um, at that home. I mean, that's going to be really, really difficult there for um, the Falcons in that one there. And then week nine, they close out going, taking on Clawson, a Trojan team that's been very successful as of late. Well-coached team, proven athletes. And I think when you look at the, the Trojans, you know, they're looking to get back to the playoffs. They're a perennial power in the MAC. So these two teams know each other quite well, especially it's the first meeting with Royal Oak High School, considering, you know, Royal Oak, um, Kimball, and Don Darrow, both Royal Kimball, Royal Oak, Don Darrow, has taken on Clawson in the past. So it'll be really interesting to see what this matchup looks like for Royal Oak. So when I look at the Ravens this year, questions on defense, you know, got questions on both sides of the ball. I know Coach Colin Campbell is going to work in that team hard. Um, it's just changing the culture with at Royal Oak. It's not an easy fix over there. It's just how they handle things and they go overnight. So that's not easy over there at Royal Oak. So Rome's not built overnight for Royal Oak. So we'll see what happens with them going forward there. So let's look at the first ever, the um, top, the, um, the projections. Of course, these are fresh off the um, aisle here, of course, when you look at the projections heading into the year. Um, I got Avondale winning this division pretty you know, I think it'll be really tight with Ferndale all year. I think that um, that Avondale, you know, I think that they'll do just enough getting the postseason. Um, I, I think it, it'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. I got Ferndale at 7-2 and two this year. I think they're going to go there 3-1 and one in the league. I think they're going to have a really nice bounce back year, the experience that they got coming back. Um, and then when you look at the rest of the division, Berkeley, you know, I thought about it with Berkeley, but I just think, you know, five maybe, you know, maybe pushing it, but I think five's a good number. I think that, um, you know, if they can go five and four, two and two, they might be on the out cuffs looking in. Um, I think that, you know, the schedule, if they can, if some of those teams in the division, in the non-conference helps them out, I think Berkeley could be a playoff team, maybe. But we'll see. We'll see. And then Royal Oak, I got them at three and six. I just... I just don't think they have enough depth. I mean, like, they just don't have, you know, they just don't have enough depth that can, I think can make some noise here. Um, I think they're going to finish 3-6. and six. And then Pontiac, I have them at 3-6. and six. I mean, I thought about putting them at 4-5, and five, but, you know, I think the schedule, you know what I mean? The schedule's manageable, but I just think that, you know, if they can pull off an upset here, maybe a couple upsets, maybe they can get back to postseason. But Pontiac right now, but I like where they're going right now. Coach Wendell Jefferson's done a really nice job building that program at Pontiac. And I think when you look at the Phoenix, I think that this team could really, they could surprise some people. I mean, I mean, who knows? I mean, you could, you could flip Pontiac, you could flip Berkeley and Royal Oak around. I mean, like in that order. But I just think right now when I look at it from a talent perspective, you know, from a mental perspective, if I had to do it from like Pontiac, the only reason why I have them there is because of the depth issues. Royal Oak, I just, I, I'm not sold in their depths. Berkeley, yeah, they're starting over, I get it, but, you know, if they can win five games, that's, that's a big deal there. But either way, I don't see them touching either Avenel or Ferndale this year um, in the division. So let's go now to the um, top 10 rankings to start off the year. Obviously, you look at the rankings. Um, I got Avenel ranked eight to start the year, and I think that's a good ranking for them. It'll be really interesting to see how this one goes. I think Avondale you know, they're going to make some noise this year. So I think they're going to surprise some people. Um, obviously, Harper Woods, my top team. West Bluefield, two. Adams, three. Lake Orion, four. Clarkson, five. Oxford, six. Grove, seven. We got Avondale, of course, here is eight. Farm Sony Creek, nine. Farmington, ten. They start the year. I thought about Fern, put Ferndale in there, but I just think, you know, maybe if Ferndale, if Ferndale makes a statement against Massachusetts Lanphier, then I think they'll make some noise. And I think when you look at the season that um, the Gold's going to have this year, it's going to be really interesting to see. I mean, particularly, does Berkeley, Royal Oak, and Pontiac, do they have a chance to knock off the top dogs, which is Avondale and Ferndale? Um, so that's going to be really interesting to see. I mean, there's a lot of storylines in this division. 
Um, make, sure you I will, make sure you follow the blog at second by 4650 at blogspot.com for the latest information regarding the previews. Of course, we'll have the, we'll have the um, previews already p released on the blog. So we'll see what happens going forward. I'm going to sign off here. Um, make sure you follow the blog at second by 4650 at blogspot.com. Take care. God bless. And I will see you all next week, everybody. Take care and see you then.